Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a great start uh, to the weekend. Hope everybody is having a good time trading. Again, market is uh, setting up really, really well. And we'll talk about that in, in a second. Uh, most important part is we are getting a lot of good signs of a really good end of the year run. Now again, Traditionally, for all you guys who have been trading for a long time, or even about two, three, even four years, um, this is kind of a, a sweet spot for the market, for speculation money. Traditionally, again, this is no guarantees, uh, but traditionally, um, this is the cycle of really good bullish market flow. You have uh, the Halloween, right? You have the Halloween rally, um, then spilled over into the Thanksgiving rally, then spilled over into the Santa Claus rally, and then you have that. Uh, January effect uh, spilling over uh, to the first quarter of the new year. Uh, now, again, is this a, a time of the year that is guaranteed to produce a rally? Absolutely not. Uh, I think a couple of years ago, we had a very, very uh, aggressive sell off uh, towards the end of the year uh, and spilling over uh, into the first quarter. But traditionally, it is a very, very good time for equities. And again, we started getting some pretty good clues. Uh, over the last week. Number one, uh, again, we've been getting good data from the whole Chinese uh, trade war. Little by little, we're getting little clues. Last weekend, we had that news. Well, last Friday, we had that news that they were initiating phase one of talks. Again, nothing materialistic, no concrete news, no details. But again, they are agreeing that they were going to sit down for another meeting. Okay, that's great. But more important, any negative headlines right now are starting to fade, okay? And nobody's really dwelling on them headline for headline like they did for the last several months that every single time there was a hiccup from the other side of uh, the aisle, whether it's the Chinese or the Americans, um, the market reacted very, very aggressively towards that uh, direction. Now we're kind of like riding the ship. We're slowly but surely just kind of steadying on uh, materialistic news that has no facts, which is good because again, the market is getting numb to it. But now we are in earnings season, okay? And the most important part of market structure is actually having companies trade on their own merits. So traditionally, if a company is good, the stock price is gonna go higher. If the company is bad and they come out with bad earnings, well, the, market, the price is gonna go lower. So at least we are standing on a catalyst and not moving up or down on same non-materialistic news, some same non-materialistic facts that we've been hearing on and off now three, four, 12 times a week um, on a daily basis, Chinese war on, Chinese towards war. So that's a good thing, okay? Um, most important part is where we are technical. If you look at uh, what the market did for the week, you, you, you can't really paint a picture of how good the price action was this week and how good the money flow for speculation capital, okay? Uh, number one, we closed over this 190.58 area, right? Everybody sees that? This is the area we talked about uh, for weeks and weeks and weeks, and we closed above that level for several days, and we started building. That was very, very important. Um, despite the market selling off pretty macro-wise um, on Friday, okay, the NASDAQ was down, uh, you yeah, had the Dow down 245 points. If you see here, and this is, guy again, what the basic point of technical analysis is, there's nothing random. If you see where the NASDAQ 100 stopped, or where the Qs, they stopped right at where the breakout started and bounced. Again, there's nothing random about technical analysis. So again, please save your opinions. Uh, it, again, stocks are either going to trade tr technically and trade uh, organically, or they're not. Okay, you don't need to give an opinion. It's all right in there. Uh, in front of you in the charts. So it's very, very important. I, I think the most important part what we saw today was, and again, I'm not a small cap trader, okay? Uh, I was one about eight, nine years ago, and I used to swing trade them. I used to have a big book, and I used to swing trade them. And again, once all these uh, alert services started popping up and 3,000 people started buying the same stock, uh, it, that, that, that died for me, okay? That died. I switched the pivots, uh, and the rest is history. But I'm not a small cap trader. I haven't been one for years, 
But what I like what I saw today, and it kind of gives me uh, kind of some good light on what's going to happen next, is a lot of these small cap stocks, they woke up aggressively this week. Okay, And um, you don't need to trade them to kind of, if you're on social media, you kind of see all these stocks just going absolutely nuts. Uh, SCS, uh, BIMI, and again, and there's, there's like 20 other, there's like 20 other ones. But again, there is a point to this, okay? This, all this crap, okay, and this is crap, right? This is crap, but again, this is your thing, this is your thing. It's not a testament if you should trade it or not. But the point is the fact that these stocks were able to go up 200, 300, 400% in a day, that is called speculation money, okay? The market is fueled by speculation money. So when you look at a Tesla, a Netflix, uh, and Amazon, all the things that I trade all the time, there is nothing more aggressive than somebody's willing to pay 400% for a stock that's up in the day. Okay, it's just the most important part. And if you look at that, and if you if you look at that, and it's correlating into the market where we are about to enter the sweet spot into the traditional fourth quarter speculation money, all that adds up into a potential really, really good market. Again, is anything uh, guaranteed? Absolutely not. But again, these are things that over the years, you collect the data, right? We always talk about collecting data. And the most important part is mentally having an opinion now of what's going to happen next. Now, despite you know the indexes, uh, I think the, the Dow is down like uh, 2% and you had a half percent rise on both the NASDAQ 100 uh, and S&P. But despite the very, very flat action of the indexes, this week, and again, if you traded this week, if you're an active trader, it was an incredibly aggressive week. Same culprits, right? Same culprits. Again, we're kind of removing, uh, removing the small cap uh, area uh, out, of this, uh, out of this focus. But if you look at the same stocks, and again, I pretty much trade the same names over and over and over again, you can see how good the measure potential was on the beta names this week. You had Roku, which is an absolute monster, not only on the way up, but on the way down, we'll talk about that pivot. You know, pivots in a second. On uh, Netflix, really, really good opportunities on the day they announced earnings, and then the following day, which was Friday, continuation move from Friday sell-off. Uh, Tesla was a monster whole week to the upside, and then Friday gave a really, really aggressive pivot to the downside. And the most important part is they are all measured potential. And again, I know a lot of you. Uh, especially newer option traders. I'm not an options trader, but but again, I do know measure potential. Uh, the, the most sweet spot for these things are towards the end of the week. And if you saw the moves on Friday, you know, the Netflix uh, monster washout, uh, the BYND monster move down, the Roku complete monster flush, you'll realize the biggest measure potential is always towards the end of the week, especially on Friday. Again, speculation money is coming into the into, into the arena. You saw Amazon when the stock was at seventeen seventy seven. I tweeted this out: one point four million dollar bet on the uh, on the uh, November uh, seventeen fifty puts. I mean, from from that bet, you know, from that bet, the stock literally went down. I mean, li literally went down about uh, you know twenty twenty two points in about in about an hour. So you're getting good measure potential. So if you are a brand new option trader, and again, I can't I, I can't tell you how to facilitate your trade. But again, if you are talking about measure potential, that's the time to put on your bets towards the end of the week, uh, Thursday, especially Friday, when the big big aggressive uh, measure moves occur, and that's when you get the most aggressive volume bets. Um, money flow bets in the options market on those weekly. So the Friday uh, could be a really, really good spot uh, for you. So going into this week, again, the market is good until it's not. And again, there, I know it's a very, very, uh, you know, kind of weird statement, but, but again, until we get any type of, any type of other evidence to suggest that back tests are just the occurrence of a very, very big aggressive move up, and we have a seasonality of strength in our future, then you have to give the benefit to the bulls. And again, as long as we stay above this range here, right? As long as we stay above this 190, 50s level close bases on the QQQs, you have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Again, don't talk about opinions. Don't talk about uh, what you think is going to happen in three months from now in a certain stock. Nobody cares about that. Technical analysis is the most purest thing you're ever going to meet. If you don't like something that somebody says, you have three choices, okay? You could either be quiet, okay? You could either talk out of your ass, okay? 
or you can take the other side of the trade, okay? But again, I said this all the time, if you are one of these stubborn traders and you're fighting price action, okay, taking the latter, right, the other side of a trade of price action, well, you're going to be in God's hands. And the most important part is when you are trading, you're trading price action, I don't care if it's long, short, in, in, in different delta neutral, whatever the case may be, Price action is much smarter than you, it's much wealthier than you, and price action doesn't care about your opinion, so stop focusing on being right and being profitable. Uh, going to this week, I am bullish until it's not. Uh, I believe if we stay above 90.58, we're gonna start rallying. The big macro key level going into this area, uh, a close above 94.71 is super important. Uh, that is the area from September the 12th, uh, obviously, that's going to be bullish. And any close, and again, this is where we don't uh, trade from rose-colored glasses. We trade from technical analysis. If the market closes above uh, 194.71 on the Qs, super bullish. If we close below this range that it took a, quite a while to get through, if we close below that 190.50 area, which will correlate with the 10-day moving average, again, for, for all you guys have been trading me, with me for about nine years, you know that the 10-day moving average is the birth of the trade. So closing below the 10-day moving average will be, well, I, I don't want to use the word death of the trade, but at least a, an a orderly back test will take place. So uh, 194.71 to the upside, uh, 190.50 to the downside close, everything else in between. Again, use your own individual process, your approach uh, to put stakes in the freezer. If you trade uh, pivots with us, you obviously know the top of the market and the bottom of the market are you know, a very, very small part of what we do. It's those sneaky channels, the meat, right? The meat of the sandwich uh, that give us uh, the most value. So a uh, very good, solid week. Uh, the same names over and over and over again. Again, this is the market. You don't, you don't need to trade 600 different stocks anymore. Again, I, I trade the same names over and over again because again, we know their tendencies, we know the ranges, we know exactly the areas that a good aggressive volume will come in because that's the arbitrage, that's the edge. And when these channels confirm, whether to the upside, to the downside, usually good uh, things uh, follow in between. So if you look at Friday's session, uh, again, you know, pretty, pretty good session. Again, BYND has just been in death mode, congratulations for all you guys who've been short all the way down. Uh, every week, you know, every week you just look, you know hear me giving levels to where it should take its next leg down. I believe it was last week was 133. 133 was uh, the low, right? 133 was the low uh, from September the 25th, and and this stock has just gotten manslaughtered, like literally every you know, manslaughtered every single day. Uh, and again, it's not how far a stock has come down. Remember guys, okay, fair value. There's no such thing as overbought or oversold, okay? Fair value is the last closing print, okay? That's all it is. Whatever somebody is willing to pay for it is the fair value for the stock. Unfortunately for this particular company, well, it's got a lot of problems. Number one, uh, it's been sold down for, I mean, if you get, you've been watching this broadcast now for, for even for weeks. This stock has stopped going down on PRs, and this is the king of the PRs now. Every week, you had you had your McDonald's PR, right? Eight, like literally testing for eight people. Okay, whatever. Uh, McDonald's PR destroyed. You had Carl's Jr. PR destroyed. You had Arby's come out on uh, Thursday, right? We actually traded. The funny thing is, we actually traded beyond to the upside on Thursday. I actually, caught a couple of bucks on this thing, but. They keep on getting sold on PRs, which is very, very bad because nobody wants to own the stock. Uh, the last two times the stock actually got upgraded, they got sold as well. And oh, by the way, uh, lockup is coming up on October the 29th. I know I think they have earnings on the 28th and lockup on the 29th or reversed. But either way, I think you have like 9.6 million shares uh, being released. And if you think the stock is going down now, then you're going to see the floodgates really, really open up on this thing. And again, for all you guys who came in uh, short, congratulations. We talked about this big gap down. Uh, any, This is in the previous night. Any close below uh, 118 can see 108 before lockup. And look what the low for the day is, 107.91. And now it gets pretty, you know, now it gets pretty basic um, on this thing. So here's here's where I got the 108, right? So that was the top of the channel from that gap up of June the 3rd. Uh, any close now below 108, guys, and this thing goes all the way down to 76. There's literally no demand from 108, right? From 108, again, you can make a turn, right? You can turn around and say, well, what about 95? Okay, 
Makes you feel better. So you have 108, 95, and then all the way down to 77. Again, keep this in mind. The IPO was from $45. So again, anybody who has shares that you know is, is salivating over the lockup uh, to make some sales, I'm pretty confident to say they will be making some sales. So great job on all you guys on uh, BYND. Uh, FAST, I still like the setup, never triggered here. Um, I kind of like this going to this week, if I could actually wake up. Uh, BBY, again, not a big move, right? If this is your thing, not a big move. But again, we talked about 70, uh, 70 20, stock went to uh, 71. Again, not the biggest move. So I'm not you know, going to trade this thing, but if this is your thing, this is your thing. A pivot is a pivot is a pivot, right? It doesn't make a difference if it's BBY or uh, beyond or anything in between. Uh, RVNC didn't trigger. Uh, again, you know, here is the pivot here, that sneaky pivot uh, under 13. You can see 110. Uh, obviously, 110 took out, went to 108. This is where things got super aggressive, like really, really aggressive here. So Netflix came out with new, uh, came out with earnings and the stock was pretty much sold off on Thursday the whole day, okay? Uh, it was sold off the whole day and the stock closed within two, three points of the low of the day. Um, and again, I wanted to give Netflix kind of the benefit of the doubt. And I, and I said this on the Thursday night or on the Wednesday, uh, excuse me, on the, on the Friday morning, uh, morning strategy that sometimes when they sell off one of these beta names, they they do have tendencies once in a while to kind of fake people out and run it the second day. It's very, very, it's it's not normal, but it has been done. So I wanted to give it kind of the, the benefit of the doubt and never did that. Okay. So we started looking at this thing and uh, we talked about what 290.50, uh, 290 if it builds below can flush. And again, I noted this was going to be a big number. Yesterday's low is 288 as a reference point. So obviously, if it starts building 280, 290, 50, 290, uh, measured potential at least is 288. If it takes out 288, it can flush. And Netflix got absolutely destroyed. I mean, really, really destroyed. So here's the 60 minute view, and this is where I got uh, all these areas. So here was the here, here was the 288, right? So here was the 288, uh, the previous day's low. Okay, so here was right here. Here was the 290.50. It was the pre market low. And again, if you believe in theory, stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. So here was to 290.50 all the way down to demand and demand and demand. So it took out the 290.50, 290 area destroyed, went down to 288. There wasn't even a breath, okay? There wasn't even a breath. If you were long in the stock and you expected any type of uh, bounce off the previous day's low, or at least a pause there, it never even happened. This thing got absolutely destroyed, took out to 88 and just went all the way down to 273. Just an absolute manslaughter. Uh, Tesla, you know, look, I, I thought on Tesla, you can get 254, 255, right? Here was the channels we were watching, 265 to the upside, 259 to the downside. Um, there was news that came out, actually positive news. I believe it was positive news about the Model 3 um, delivery somewhere in the middle of the day. And I noticed that the stock did just did not rally off that news, not even an uptick, okay? Usually when you get really, really good news like that or a positive headline, Tesla would usually spark and had such a big, big run. So it was just tired. And again, nobody was talking about the stock was going to go down $10, $15 today. We were just talking about there's a measured potential uh, going all the way down to the 254, 255 if this 259, if this 259 uh, confirmed. And the reason why, again, if you look at Tesla's chart, again, here's the 259, right? Here was the 259 area. And the reason why I said 254, 255, Everybody see that? It correlates pretty well, right? It stopped right on the daily chart, uh, right before, just right above that 254.78 level. So really good sell-off here. So again, here's the 255, and it just went straight down uh, to the 255 level. That 255, 254 is going to be a pretty good area uh, for a line in the sand going into uh, next week. So nice job on, uh, on, um, on Tesla. Again, on BBY, sell on the way up. Uh, and, and Roku, okay, talk about it. I mean, we traded Roku all week uh, to the upside. Uh, I traded Roku three or four times this week to the upside. Pretty good pretty good moves, as you guys have seen, especially Thursday. That, that, that last pivot just went bananas. But, you know, here was an area that, you know, I thought it could get hit, okay? Uh, it came back down, tested that channel, started spiking. I said, hey, look, if this 135.45 area, if it builds below, can flush, okay? It can flush for some flow. Again, I thought that had a measured potential of roughly 130, 180. Okay, I thought there was a shot at 130, 180, 
because 131.80, and first of all, let me just show you the, the setup here. So here is the, you know, here's the, the, it stopped here, right? At 32, uh, 32.19, this area here was that 131.80s level. And I said, if this thing potentially, you know, if this thing potentially goes, you could probably get an aggressive move of 31.80. I, I think I tweeted it, I, I think it, I tweeted this out. Uh, yeah, 31.80 was the rising five day. Forget about the 3180. Okay, this thing ripped through the five day like it wasn't even there. And forget about 3180. This thing went all the way down to 126. Just an absolute uh, manslaughter. Really, really big move on Roku as well. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, strong build, BYND, new lows, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 110, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, I mean, here is, here, you know, here is, uh, here is Tesla. Any close now in the 258 sees 254, 255. Uh, perfect move there. Here it comes. Da, 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 from what I hear. And that's it. But again, you, you had the big measured moves. And that was the most important part of not only on Friday, okay, not only Friday, but you had these really big measured moves on the whole week. Netflix, Tesla, BYND, especially Roku, Apple is a beast. Uh, as well, I even tweeted this out. I even tweeted out. If you go to my, uh, if you go to my regular, uh, if you go to my regular Twitter feed, I, you know, I always try to, uh, I always try to put some uh, some free pivots, of guys. You know, t towards the end of the day, just to give you guys, um, you know, just to give you guys, uh, in a sense, in real time, how these things work, uh, and pretty good stuff here. Even even Apple. Uh, let me just give you an idea. Uh, let me give you an idea of some of these uh, pivots here. I think I gave. I think I gave out Apple. On Friday, uh, yeah. So I wrote here on Apple. Uh, it was three twenty. It was obviously three thirty six forty, but three thirty six thirty three thirty six forty needs to build again. Here's a perfect example. Uh, here's a perfect example why uh, pivots again, sneaky pivots work very very well. So here is the whole three thirty six forty area, and once it confirmed again, this is on a market that was selling off. Uh, ran you know ran about a dollar and change for a very very good aggressive move again I you know again it, it's all good after the fact everybody puts you know it's lines on charts and this and they again the, these pivots are again I say this all the time you, you breathe in real time uh, you laugh and cry and love in real time you have to trade in real time okay and the most important part is when I do give uh, a pivot in real time I want to see I want to show you guys that again there is an alternative way to trading and I said this for many, many years, if you're trading two, three, four years and you're constantly doing the same thing, you're just kind of stuck in the mud. It, it, again, the only way to change your view of the markets is you have to have an open mind. There is another way. There just there is. It's like going to Baskin Robbins and say, oh, man, vanilla. I like vanilla, but, you know, I'm getting tired of vanilla. And then you realize yeah, there's another 31 flavors uh, that you can try. But but again, we did find this, I mean, I found this arbitrage almost eight years ago, and we've been developing it year after year after year. And again, because you guys see this, man, uh, you know, it's it's pretty good. I mean, it, it really is pretty good. And the most important part is if you are trading two, three, four years, at some point you have to, you know, ask yourself, how long can I hemorrhage money and brain cells and sweat and mental equity and not get anywhere? Again, you have to, if, if you are, uh, serious about being uh, a professional trader, aspiring trader, whatever the case may be, you have to be open uh, to other ways. And again, I don't care if you trade options or futures or uh, you know mid caps or Bitcoin, anything or pivots. It, there has to be another way that if you if your current situation is not working, that you have to give it an opportunity. You have to give yourself every opportunity uh, to succeed. So uh, going into this week, guys, I am uh, bullish. Okay, I am bullish until I am not. Again, that is the greatest part about being a professional trader. You're never locked into an area of concentration. You have to be flexible. And when the data changes, okay, when the data changes, you have to be uh, able to adopt. So let me give you guys some ideas, uh, non-beta ideas for uh, the week. Some some names that I do like, obviously the beta stuff, uh, it's a little bit different. I, 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 I stop pretty much giving beta ideas up front, not because of this whole cloak and dagger, because again, for us, the way I trade pivots, I need to see organic order flow. If I see, you know, an extra amount of volume come in, it doesn't mean it's good or bad. It means sometimes, well, people are just watching pivots and they're going to be jumping in at the wrong time on those pivots, thinking that's confirmation. And again, if you don't know how to trade these pivots the right way, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So I just kind of stopped uh, giving the pivots out um, in real time just because I want to see 
organic order flow. And that's very, very important to me. But let me give you guys uh, some non-beta names. Again, you don't need to trade beta. Um, you don't need to trade beta to trade pivots. It's very, very important to understand that. Uh, NET looks really good. Uh, NET recent IPO uh, closed below this range here, 1550. If it starts building down below 15, 20, 15, you could get a move here to the bottom of the channel of 14 and change. Uh, Crone, again, these pot stocks, they just can't rally. It's just the reality. I mean, th with the whole pot sector strong and crazy and all that stuff, they just can't rally, man. They just really can't. Uh, the last couple of days low was this 830 level on Crone. Even the news got sold. Uh, if it starts building below 830, 825, you could get a move back to the bottom channel of 760s. Uh, PCAR. Actually, a nice looking chart. Um, I haven't traded Picard, man, and God knows how long, but this is a long, long base going all the way back to uh, end of June. Uh, if it starts building over 7250, you could get a nice move there as well. Uh, NTES might be starting its uh, back test, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not back test. It could start uh, its backs up, backs up, right? It had a big, big run here. Uh, first red candle, second red candle stopped on the five day. Again, if the five day gets confirmed, just like the way Tesla did on Friday, if the five day con gets confirmed, you do have a lot of room here down to 273. So let's keep an eye on that. Uh, and SGN, nice little chart here as well. Uh, SGN as well. If it starts confirming the top of this channel after good consolidation on the daily, um, you know, above 88, you know, 88, 70s, 89, you could get a move uh, to this 90, 57 area. So guys, have an awesome, awesome uh, rest of your weekend. Uh, God bless. Do some fun. You know, do something fun. Have some me time. Uh, enjoy yourself. Again, we only have one life. We don't get it, uh, a mulligan or any do-overs. Guys, God bless. And I'll see you all on Monday. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.